Now, the concept of independent assortment is going to come up only if we're dealing with two traits on two separate chromosomes. Remember that independent assortment is just the random way that homologs align during meiosis. Segregation, the law of segregation, is that we actually separate alleles during meiosis. This whole thing can be explained by the process of meiosis, which, again, Mendel did not know about this whole process. He didn't know about chromosomes. He didn't know about genes or alleles. But he figured out, and now we've got all these data, and we can look at them and go, yeah, that, we can explain exactly how that happens. We can explain the law of segregation because we understand meiosis. We can explain the law of independent assortment because we understand meiosis. Now, this example that we have, we're dealing with one gene, one trait on one chromosome. We have two different alleles, but we're just dealing with one gene. That's not going to show us the results of independent assortment. Independent assortment is going to be visible when we do two different traits. And we're going to do that. We're going to do a Punnett square first. Then we're going to do a simple monohybrid cross. And then we're going to do a dihybrid cross. And it's in dihybrid cross land that we then can see the results of independent assortment. And so I'm going to postpone our in-depth conversation about that until we get to dihybrid cross land. So we have this, what, basis. Now we're going to look at the tool that we can use, knowing everything that we know about meiosis and genetics. We have a tool called a Punnett square that's going to help us solve problems around heredity. And we can understand the Punnett square because we understand meiosis. All right, I'll be right back to show you how the Punnett square works.